This is a story about how this lighthouse helped me rediscover my love for fishing as an adult by combining two hobbies over several visits. As a landscape photographer, I often dream up of the perfect timing to capture a landscape photograph. I'd always had a particular vision in mind for an aerial photograph of this lighthouse, which holds both sentimental values to myself and family members. After work each day and over many trips, I'd pack my drone and fishing rod in hope that I could capture the perfect sunset shot over this lighthouse. If the sunset didn't happen, I'd spend some time in solitude fishing the shorelines for calamari. It was an interesting time in my life, struggling with my mental health at this particular time, but also spending far too much time stressing over my workload. Visiting the lighthouse helped me dissipate anxiety from my daily duties and acted as a medium to reset my soul. It taught me that I belong here and I'm the happiest version of myself when I'm surrounded by a shoreline. One day on a visit down to the lighthouse, the skies opened up and the weather gods blessed me with my opportunity. It finally happened. I had my fishing rod in hand and I was facing the opposite direction to the sunset. I turned around, noticed the sky and belted to my car to drive up to the lighthouse. I set my drone up in the sky, flew into position and it was at that moment I realized this is the opportunity I've been waiting for. In this episode of Tazcast, we're taking it back to roots, fishing the shorelines of this area for a bit of a catch and cook. G'day Wallaby Dick, welcome to another episode of Tazcast Fishing Adventures. Today we're at a very beautiful spot that I love coming to about an hour from Launceston and we're taking it back to basics with some squid fishing, hoping to achieve a bit of a catch and cook today. I just love this area so much, I uh, spent a lot of time here as a kid, it holds a lot of sentimental value to me and it's beautiful being able to pop down here after work and catch a feed of southern calamari. Um, and fingers crossed that's what we'll be able to achieve today. I'm just using a nice little 10 pound combo, 10 pound leader, 10 pound braid, and I've had to change one of my reels up on this little outfit as well because I didn't take care of my previous one so well. Always wash your gear. So let's see if we can find any squid and we will get into it. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hopefully you can learn a thing or two. Um, not a whole lot's happening, but I feel like I should provide some value for you when you are squid fishing. Not that I'm catching anything now, but if you do have a little bit of weed on the end of your squid jig, I like to wash it off, blow it off, and if I'm frustrated because I'm not catching anything, I give it the nice little cowboy whip. Uh, honestly, I really don't think you'll catch a squid if there's a bit of weed on the end of it. Well, the moment has finally hit us. I've caught calamari. Just in time, because we fired up the barbecue. I'm gonna quickly clean this one up. Bit of a smaller creature in comparison to what we'd like. He's just gonna get his ink out there and we'll pull him in. He was hooked pretty well, so he shouldn't come out. Ah, ah, ah. Please don't ink me. <laughs> there we go. A nice southern calamari from the mouth of the tamer. How's that? We got there eventually. Well, we have done it on a 3.5. Nice little calamari. The barbecue is set over here. I'll see if I can quickly get another one because we've still got a little bit of light left. That's what we're here for. 
Nice little catch and cook, right from the source. <laughs> the squid are on. Managed to find another one that's having a fair bit of a crack too. Um, well, we're about 15 minutes before sunset's officially happening. And it's a beautiful sunset too. Over at the lighthouse looks pretty cool. Uh, feed of squid. These guys are not going to go to waste at all. And this one's only just hooked. So I'm going to come around this side. Just be careful this doesn't squirt you in the face. Try and land this one a little bit better. I might lose him here. See if I can beach him. Oh, he's only just hooked. Ugh. All right, slow and steady. There we go. Another beautiful calamari. That's the size that we're after as well. Gotta be happy with that. Now, um, this is a pretty traditional method for a lot of people out there, and you will know this. But, if you do just want to put these guys out of their misery, just a nice little karate chop to the back of their head. And they just go white, just like that. Well, not long after the previous squid, we've found another one here off the rocks. Let's see if I can land this one a little bit more proficiently than the previous. Oh, I'm in the firing line. Oh, I'm in the firing line. Oh. <laughs> oh, there we go. Another calamari. We are on the board. Nice little feed of squid. Now these guys, like I said before, they are not gonna go to waste. These heads I'll take out to the shelf for deep dropping or I'll use them for bait. I might even rig up some of these whole for sword baits. So keeping on to these guys throughout summer is literally like gold. Once again, nice, quick, humane kill. And he is dead. So we've got a nice little feed of calamari here. If I can get one more, I'm gonna be absolutely stoked. But we're on the board and uh, we're gonna cook these up very shortly and have some calamari wraps. A lot of people, when they're squid fishing, seem to really love just rushing the wind and the retrieve. Something that I've found over the many years of playing around with squid is that the longer I let it sit, the more opportunity I have for that presentation to just be gulped up. Um, so typically what I do when I'm casting out is I'll let it sit for like 15, 20 seconds. Sometimes I'll even count the drop if I've got about a metre of water in front of me. It always seems to happen on the last cast. I don't know what it is. I think we're going to have to change the name of Tazcast to Last Cast Fishing <laughs> because it's when all of the action starts to happen. See where he's hooked. He's a nice size to it, this one. Just got to keep that tension on him. I'll try and beach him in a second. All right, I'm going to go for the landing. <laughs> Keeping that tension at the same time. Get him up on the rocks, look out for the ink. How cool is that? Beautiful little colors on his hood. Nice red, beige. What color is that? Burgundy. <laughs> Just on that $2 jig that I've purchased today and picked up. Just definitely paid its way. Alrighty guys, I'm gonna quickly run over how I clean my Southern Calamari. The thing that speeds up my workflow the most is that I keep the wings in one whole chunk. That allows me to spend less time fluffing around. But the way that I do that is I run my finger straight away, straight down the side. Instead of just ripping that off completely, I've got a little bit of ink here, but I'll clean that up. I try to then just wiggle my finger around on the other side of the torso and then slowly pull back the skin all as one piece like that. So that's one chunk of the wings. Secondly, what I do is finger straight down in the middle of the hood. Run your finger down that backbone, take the head off. This one's a bit messier than what I'm used to. So we'll give it a quick rinse. Once it's rinsed, what we're going to do 
is with my little bit of uh, my thumb, I'm just going to try and get this backbone section off, which is the hardest part of this cephalopod or calamari. Run your finger down through that and pull out that backbone. When you do pull the backbone out, sometimes it gives you the opportunity to easily turn the squid inside out as well, which is the next move after this. So, got a little bit of friction on that. This is our backbone that's come, come out. But you just wanna put your finger straight up the top here, to a little turn inside out, just like that. Two fingers, this is probably the most rancid thing you're gonna to see today. <laughs> and then we have our gunk on the inside. Just quickly clean that up. A little bit more ink on this one. You really had a lot left when we put him in. And that is our washed and cleaned calamari torso, ready for the barbecue. So let's go and turn it into a wrap. Alrighty, first things first, gonna cut this calamari into nice pieces. I'm just gonna chuck it straight on there. And what I'm going to do is use a little bit of Tasman smoked salt from the east coast of Tassie. This stuff is beautiful. Just gonna smack that on top of there. A little bit of pepper. And we'll let that sit for a couple of seconds while I reuse some avocado that I didn't quite finish last night. Now, cameraman, are you going to have another wrap? Oh yeah, no problem. I'll cut up some avocado for you too then. Now, something that I have been absolutely smashing lately is a little bit of pickle naze. <laughs> I don't know how it's taken the world so many years to come up with this, but this stuff is incredible. So I'm just going to douse that uh, and then I'll chuck my calamari on. It'll already be ready to go. Pretty much once the calamari has turned white like it has, it's ready to eat. Couple of uh, sun-dried tomatoes. This is my naughty little treat. Mmm. Perfect for entertaining over summer, but perfect for your wraps as well. Couple of pieces of calamari. And that is going straight in my belly. Oh yeah. Time for the taste test. Nearly dropped it. Mmm. That is so good. I really don't think it can get much fresher. That calamari is sensational. You don't want to overcook this, you don't want it to get too tough. Two minutes is more than enough as soon as it turns white, ready to go. So I'm going to enjoy this wrap. I think uh, the cameraman is going to enjoy his as well. Um, I hope you've learned a thing or two watching this episode of Tazcast. I might see after I eat if I can catch one more calamari. It's always nice to have them on board. I'm going to finish chewing. Hopefully you're going to like this video and comment down below what you learnt, if you learn anything. And we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching, you wallaby dick.